season one of Outer Banks is set in the titular coastal town in North Carolina and focuses on a group of teenage friends known as the Pogues. The Pogues are a group of working class locals who are constantly at odds with the wealthy seasonal elites known as the Kooks. The Pogues ringleader is John B. Rutledge, and fellow members include his reckless best friend JJ, the brainy Pope, and Key, who is technically a kook but stays loyal to her longtime friends in the Pogues instead. John B.'s father, Big John, has been lost at sea and presumed dead for nine months, following his quest for a long-missing ship from the 1800s known as the Royal Merchant, and all of the treasure it contained. With no legal guardian, John B. is forced to evade Child Protective Services and the well-meaning Sheriff Peterkin to avoid being sent to live in a foster home. After a hurricane, the Pogues find a wrecked boat containing a compass belonging belonging to John B.'s father. Using clues from the compass, the Pogues uncover a map to the royal merchant wreckage, and a message from Big John urging his son to finish what he started. Despite a pair of mysterious armed and dangerous men hunting them down, the Pogues managed to track down the ship wreckage, only to discover that someone had already taken all of the gold. Meanwhile, John B. begins to grow close to Sarah Cameron. Nicknamed the Princess of the Kooks, Sarah is the daughter of John B.'s wealthy employer, Ward. As the two begin to fall in love, Sarah realizes that she feels much more at peace as a pogue than a kook. This new relationship creates a lot of animosity between John B. and Sarah's ex-boyfriend Topper. Also starting up a romance of their own are Pope and Key. Eventually, John B. realizes that the Cameron family property was in fact a former plantation built by a freed slave named Denmark Tanny. Denmark had been the sole survivor of the royal merchant wreckage and escaped with the gold. John B. and the Pogues managed to decipher a letter Denmark had written to his son before his death, revealing the location of the buried treasure. Unfortunately, Sarah's father Ward overhears his daughter's discovery and moves to steal the gold for himself. It turns out Ward had been a treasure hunting partner of Big John only to betray and murder him. Ward has been desperate to find the royal merchant for years, and has aligned with many criminal organizations and corrupt cops like Deputy Shoop to achieve his goal. Ward then has his men capture the gold and orders them to fly to his home in the Bahamas. John B. tries to stop the plane with some help from Sheriff Peterkin, who has spent the last nine months trying to find evidence linking Ward to Big John's death. Unfortunately, Ward's loyal drug addict son Rafe murders Peterkin to save his father. Ward then pins the sheriff's death on John B., forcing him to go on the run with Sarah. Not only are the police in pursuit, but so are the vengeful Topper and Rafe. As the police close in, Topper proves his true love and devotion to Sarah by helping her and John B. escape. As the season comes to a close, John B. flees with Sarah straight into a tropical storm. The two are presumed dead, with the Pogues mourning the loss of their friends. Fortunately, John B. and Sarah actually survived and were rescued by a cargo ship headed for the Bahamas. I want to cut in real quick and tell you about this video sponsor, Factor. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals made by gourmet chefs straight to your doorstep. You just go to their website and choose between a variety of options, including Chef's Choice, Protein Plus, Keto, Calorie Smart, or Vegan and Veggie. Whatever your dietary needs, Factor has a meal that will suit your lifestyle. And after having your Factor meals delivered straight to your doorstep, you'll be eating restaurant quality meals with no prep, no mess, no tiring cooking times. Just delicious meals with quality ingredients ready in just two minutes in the microwave. I work from home, I'm a terrible cook, and I have bad eating habits. So instead of driving to the grocery store to buy ingredients for a meal I don't know how to make, or picking up expensive takeout that's greasy and unhealthy, I just pop a factor meal in the microwave and then dig into an incredible meal. I mean seriously, in my newest factor box I received chicken florentine, garlic and herb chicken, pasta primavera, and more. How how else am I going to eat food that good with this much ease? And there are so many other options that Factor offers in addition to their ready-made meals, like breakfast options, fresh pressed juices, smoothies, desserts, and more. I recently began starting my day with their cold brew latte protein shakes. They taste great and they give me everything I need to get my day started right, whether that be editing a recap or working on my fitness goals. So head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use promo code RECAP50 at checkout to get 50% off your first box and 20% off your first month of orders. That's code RECAP50 at Factor75.com to get 50% off your first box and 20% off your first month of orders. Thanks so much to Factor for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the recap. 
In Season 2 of Outer Banks, the Pogues get a message from John B telling them that he is alive and well in the Bahamas. And so the Pogues devise a plan to exonerate him for Sheriff Peterkin's murder and expose Ward Cameron's villainous nature. They record Ward killing his pilot Gavin, who threatened to expose Rafe killing Peterkin. But unfortunately, the video is destroyed. Fortunately, they manage to find the gun Rafe used to kill Peterkin, but then unknowingly deliver it to the corrupt interim Sheriff Shoop. Upon discovering that John B. and Sarah are alive in the Bahamas, Ward and Rafe race to retrieve the gold and sell it off before the Pogues can get their hands on it. John B. and Sarah team up with the cargo ship's Captain Terrence and his crewmate Cleo to steal the gold, but during their escape from the Camerons, Sarah is shot by her brother Rafe. This doesn't seem to bother the unhinged Rafe, who confesses to his father that he wanted to kill his traitorous sister for good. As John B. takes Sarah to a surgeon to save her life, Cleo arrives to inform them that Ward and the Bahamian police have gotten away with the gold and seemingly killed Terrence. As a defeated John B and Sarah return to the Outer Banks to reunite with the other Pogues, they also get fake married to prove their love for each other. Meanwhile, Pope meets a wealthy stranger named Carla Limbry, a woman whose ancestors have a dark connection to Denmark Tanny and the Royal Merchant. Carla has been searching for the Royal Merchant wreckage for many years and had been double-crossed by Ward Cameron. Carla has obtained a tape of Ward's pilot Gavin confessing that it was Rafe that killed Peterkin, but won't use it to exonerate John B unless the Pokes help her retrieve a key belonging to Denmark Tanny. Carla believes Pope's family has the key in their possession, as she reveals that Pope is in fact a descendant of Denmark Tanny. This key supposedly led to another treasure in the cross of Santo Domingo. Carla believes that a magical shroud stored inside the cross could cure her of a disease that is rapidly killing her. And to be even more sure that the Pogues would cooperate, she kidnaps Pope and holds him hostage. The Pogues rescue Pope and flee, but now they have to worry about Carla, Ward, and Rafe all hunting them down. As the police catch up to the Pogues, John B. surrenders himself and is arrested. As Ward bribes an inmate to murder John B., the other Pogues try everything they can to free him. Sarah tries to get the help of her younger sister Wheezy to incriminate Rafe, but Rafe catches her and tries to murder her. Fortunately, Topper arrives and rescues his former love. Meanwhile, Pope and Key find the mysterious Tanny Key in the hopes of using it to exonerate John B., but it's actually the formerly corrupt Shoop who saves the day. Using Rafe's finger prints on the gun to exonerate John B and apprehend the true killer. With John B saved, the Pogues turn their attention to bringing down Ward. They swap a fake Tanny key to Carla Limbry for her tape of Gavin, which implicates Ward Cameron. After turning this tape over to the police, the authorities issue a warrant for Ward's arrest. Not wanting to go to prison, Ward flees on his boat and blows it up, seemingly dying in the explosion. Following this, the police receive a taped confession, where Ward takes responsibility for the deaths of Big John, Gavin, and Sheriff Peterkin, exonerating his son Rafe. John B. is relieved by Ward's death, fracturing his relationship with the grieving Sarah. With Ward dead, the Pogues turn their attention to the Tanny Key and the mysterious cross of Santo Domingo treasure. Unfortunately, Carla has discovered that she was given a fake key and arrives in the Outer Banks with her half-brother Rinfield to retrieve the real key by any means necessary. The Limbries, now working with an erratic Rafe, manage to find and steal the cross. The villainous trio all attempt to double-cross each other, with Carla forced to murder her own brother before Rafe steals the cross for himself and flees. Rafe meets up with his mother Rose, and the duo take the gold, the cross, and a kidnapped Sarah to flee the country aboard a ship known as Coastal Venture. The Pogues sneak their way onto the ship, where they discover that Ward Cameron is also on board, alive and well. It was Ward's plan all along to fake his death and have his family join him in paradise. Helping the Pogues in their fight aboard the Coastal Venture is Cleo, who just so happened to be working as part of the ship's crew. Unfortunately, Though John B. critically injures the villainous Ward, the Pogues are ultimately defeated and forced overboard. The Camerons now have the cross and the gold, while the Pogues wash up on a deserted island they dub Poglandia. As the season comes to a close, Carla Limbry visits an alive and well Big John, who promises to help her on her quest if she agrees to help his son John B. 
In Season 3 of Outer Banks, one month has passed for the Pogues stranded on their new deserted island home. When rescue seems to come in the form of a passing plane, the Pogues realize the duplicitous nature of the pilot, leading to the plane crashing. As everyone swims to shore, Key is kidnapped, leaving all of her friends forced to devise a way to rescue her. Meanwhile, as Ward Cameron recovers from his injury sustained in his fight against John B., Rafe steps up to lead his family in their new safe haven in Guadalupe, and finds a buyer for the Santo Domingo Cross. That buyer is a man named Carlos Singh, the same man who kidnapped Key. Carlos explains that he is searching for the infamous treasure of El Dorado, the same treasure Big John has spent his entire life searching for, which he believes can be found with Denmark Tanny's diary. And so, Carlos requires the help of Key, the Pogues, and even the resourceful Cameron family. Key and Rafe steal a boat and escape their mutual enemy together, leading to Key reuniting with the Pogues. As Key and her friends use the stolen boat to finally return to the Outer Banks, John B. stays behind to follow the sound of bells clanging to the tune his father played to him as a child. The bells lead John B. to a church, where he emotionally reunites with the alive and well Big John. That reunion is cut short by the arrival of Carlos's men, forcing the father and son to flee together back to Outer Banks. John B. happily reunites with the Pogues, but their friendship becomes strained when Big John distrusts them too much, especially Sarah Cameron, to include them in his and John B.'s plan to find the treasure of El Dorado together. And on top of the treasure drama, the Pogues return to Outer Banks reveals a lot of other problems. JJ discovers that his home has been foreclosed on, but does become closer romantically to Key. Pope becomes jealous of the new pair, but finds comfort in Cleo. And Sarah comes to terms with no longer having her family or her home. With Rafe in town to get the Cameron family's affairs in order, Sarah and the Pogues recruit Topper to help them steal back the cross. Unfortunately, the Pogues fail in their quest, and Rafe goes against his own father's wishes to melt down the cross to more easily sell it off. Pope is distraught that his family's cross has been destroyed and does more research into Denmark Tanny with Cleo, leading to the two discovering the secret to reaching El Dorado. Meanwhile, John B. and his father continue their search for El Dorado. Along their adventure together, John B. becomes Comes unsettled by the links his father is willing to go to to complete their quest. When Carla Limbry confronts the pair, she demands that Big John deliver to her the magical healing shroud he promised that could supposedly cure her crippling sickness. Big John gives Carla a fake shroud, but she is so convinced of its authenticity that it appears to actually cure her. As John B. continues pushing his friends away due to his father, Sarah grows closer to Topper, leading to the ex-lovers sharing a kiss. When Big John is captured by and taken to South America to continue the hunt for El Dorado, John B. seeks the help of his Pogue allies to save his father. A remorseful Sarah confesses her affair with Topper, leading to John B. severely beating his rival. Topper wants to press criminal charges against John B., but Sarah convinces him to delay his plans. As Ward returns to Outer Banks to clean up the mess his son Rafe had made for their family name, he also attempts to reconcile with his daughter, helping Sarah and the Pogue secure a flight to South America. As Ward disowns his son, and cuts him out of his will, Rafe conspires with his friend Barry to have his own father killed. Rafe immediately has a change of heart and saves his father from a hired hitman. During the chaos, a local notices Ward, who had been declared dead to the public, and alerts the authorities. With the police in pursuit, Rafe and Ward race to the airfield, where Ward boards the Pogue's flight to South America and reconciles with his son, giving Rafe his blessing to lead the Cameron family empire. In South America, John B. and his friends rescue Big John and race to find El Dorado before Singh and his men. Unfortunately, as the group near El Dorado's entrance, Ward betrays them and alerts Singh to their location. A gunfight ensues, resulting in Big John being shot, though the others manage to escape. Sarah rebukes her father once again, dismissing him due to yet another betrayal. As John B. and his allies use Denmark Tanny's secrets to navigate a series of caves, they finally reach the underwater entrance to El Dorado, the fabled treasure that Big John had dedicated his entire life to, to the detriment of his relationship with his son. Unfortunately, his gunshot wound makes it impossible for Big John to enter El Dorado, so John B. and Sarah continue alone, finding a massive treasure trove of gold. John B. and 
and Sarah fill their bags with their newfound riches, but upon leaving El Dorado, they discover that Singh has arrived to hold them at gunpoint and steal the gold for himself. The injured Big John uses dynamite to cause a cave-in, killing Singh. And that's when Ward returns to also hold the group at gunpoint. Sarah makes a final appeal to her father, knowing he isn't capable of killing them all. As Ward emotionally breaks down, one of Singh's henchmen arrives and threatens Sarah. And so, a remorseful Ward sacrifices himself to save his daughter. As the Pogues make their escape, Big John begins to succumb to his injuries. He bids his son an emotional goodbye as he dies, and John B. honors his father by burying his body with a piece of the gold he spent his life searching for. As the season comes to a close, 18 months have passed and life is better than ever for the newly wealthy Pogues, who in addition to their riches are also lauded heroes for discovering the location of El Dorado. And that's when they're approached by a mysterious stranger who seeks their assistance in finding the long-lost treasure of the infamous pirate Blackbeard.